Freshman GOP lawmaker Madison Cawthorn is one of 17 Republicans who are signing on to a letter where they are committing to work with Joe Biden. Now, this is kind of weird, especially for someone like Madison Cawthorn, who just a couple of weeks ago objected to the certification of the election results on grounds that he believed Joe Biden is an illegitimate winner. He did not win fair and square. He believes the lie that Donald Trump told about the election being stolen. So it, it's weird because if you think that Joe Biden is an illegitimate president, then why would you commit to working with the president who you claimed was illegitimate? This is, I think, a question that we have to ask ourselves. Now, thankfully, he appeared on CNN and the anchor did ask him this question and went a little bit further and tried to get him to explain why he believed the election was stolen from Donald Trump. And you are going to see him make a complete fool of himself. This is content that is so cringeworthy. I think it should go in like the Hall of Fame. Uh, you can see him get visibly flustered. He face plants. He doesn't necessarily know what to say. You can kind of tell that he knows, uh, realizes that he contradicted himself. And then he tries to like explain himself further. It's just a really bad look. Uh, I enjoyed every second of this. Take a look. Can you just share some specific examples of election fraud. What, what are some specific examples that informed this bold decision, this audacious decision, even after the riots to, to decertify the results? You must have seen some concrete evidence. Well, Pam, the things that I was not objecting to the election on behalf of was things like Dominion voting machines changing ballots or these U-Haul trucks pulling up filled with b ballots for Joe Biden as president. The thing I was objecting for is th things like, in, like I said, in the state of Wisconsin, particularly in the town of Madison, uh, there was a, an appointed official in that town who actually went against the will of the state legislature and created ballot drop boxes, which is basically ballot harvesting that was happening in the parks. But this was all litigated. You, you know that the Trump campaign litigated all of this, more than 60 cases, and they lost. Either the cases were dismissed, the Trump campaign withdrew, or they never brought a case because they didn't have the evidence to back it up. Indeed, I believe specifically, and this is the one that I debated on behalf of on the House floor, in Wisconsin, uh, that was never heard because they dismissed it because of standing. Now, I don't believe that that is a concrete enough of well, a way Well, there were three Trump appointments. Okay, so you have Wisconsin, it. but you never, you, you ended up not actually voting against Wisconsin. It was just Arizona and Pennsylvania because you didn't have the Senate votes. Um, but three Trump appointed judges actually threw out these cases because of merit. It was because of merit. There were three Trump appointed judges out of all of these judges and more, the more than 60 cases that were tossed out. And you t keep talking about Wisconsin. I'm still not hearing any specific examples of fraud. If you would just tell us what are the specific examples you saw of fraud? Because when you think of fraud, you think of a vote, you're slipping one past the election official or a vote was stolen. Somehow it didn't count. Did you see that specifically? No, Pam. And like I said, that's so not the didn't. reason I okay. contested the election. Hold on. So you wanted to throw out millions of votes without actually seeing any concrete evidence of fraud? Because that's what you were doing when you were contesting the election. The intent there was throwing out millions of votes. Well, I disagree with you on that point. That was not my intent. My intent was to hold up the Constitution and setting up ballot drop boxes, which is essentially ballot harvesting in Wisconsin, is unconstitutional because the state legislature said they didn't want that. So you know more than the judge, the Trump appointed judge who said that, who actually looked at that case before the election and dismissed the Trump campaign's um, argument that drop boxes are unconstitutional. And if you would, would you point to me and where in the constitution it says that drop boxes are unconstitutional? I don't recall seeing that in the constitution. So we'll just stop it right there because it doesn't get much better for him. That was awful. <laughs> like. <laughs> If I'm like one of his advisors, I'm trying to train him on like answering questions properly and, and coherently. What he's saying here is so stupid uh, to say that he makes a number of logical leaps that make him look stupid is an understatement because basically what he says is, look, I'm not like these other unreasonable Republicans who claim that the election was just like flat out stolen. I don't think that Dominion stole votes and like flipped them from Trump to Biden. I'm not saying that there were trucks that brought in millions of pro Biden ballots and like dropped them off. That's not what I'm claiming. I'm just saying that the election was stolen and I objected to the certification of the election results because in Wisconsin there were ballot drop-off sites. 
Therefore, the entire election is illegitimate. Let's throw out millions and millions of ballots. Really, that's that's your argument. And what's weird is that the contradiction emerges very clearly when um, she points out that he did not object to the certification of the results in Wisconsin. He objected specifically to Pennsylvania and Arizona. Now, it was because you need senators to sign on to that process as well. Uh, but still, if you're claiming Wisconsin, why is that the only state you're pointing out when you also objected to the certification of the results in Arizona and Pennsylvania? Like, what you're saying doesn't make sense. It's a contradiction. And on top of that, like, what he says about Wisconsin in particular and why it was supposedly rigged is nonsensical. So first of all, drop boxes were approved by the Wisconsin Elections Commission and they provide people a place to drop off their absentee ballots. This isn't controversial at all. Um, but according to him, this is illegal because it's tantamount to ballot harvesting, which is illegal in Wisconsin. This is his claim anyways. But first of all, it's not the same thing as ballot harvesting. And second of all, Wisconsin doesn't actually specify whether or not a third party can collect and return someone else's ballot. And the only state where so-called ballot harvesting is illegal is in Alabama, not Wisconsin. So he makes an assumption and then makes a logical leap based off of that flawed assumption. And you just don't have enough evidence to go from point A to point B. But all of this is moot because you voted in favor of certifying the results in Wisconsin. It was Pennsylvania and Arizona. So where is the evidence specifically that it was rigged in Arizona and Pennsylvania? Like, do you understand why there's a problem here? He can't figure out the argument that he wants to use to claim that the election was stolen. And do we know why that's the case, folks? It's because he has no evidence that the election was stolen because the election was not stolen. There is not evidence that widespread voter fraud and election fraud led to the results changing. So that's why he was sitting there scrambling, trying to make up some reason as to why we should throw out millions of votes and literally invalidate an election. Like, he can't, he can't explain it. Well, these drop-off sites, that is actually ballot harvesting. I don't like them, so I'm going to call them ballot harvesting. And we should hate ballot harvesting because... Um, that's what the GOP says. Like, this dude is a moron, and you are a member of Congress. You're a member of Congress now, and you still don't have your shit together. And he's young, he's 25 years old, but this is the job that you signed up for. You've got to come with the facts, right? You can't just make things up now. You're a lawmaker, you're in a position of power. So if you're going to claim that the election is stolen, put up or shut up. Uh, well, uh, like... I don't know, the uh, drop-off sites are like really suspicious and uh, ballot harvesting, which is basically just ballot collecting, is a word that scares me. And so I'm going to say that the drop-off sites are ballot harvesting, but then I'm going to vote to certify the results in Wisconsin anyway, uh, because really it's Arizona and Pennsylvania where it was stolen, but I'm not going to tell you how it was stolen. Like, dude, you look like a fucking idiot and you're on national television and this isn't going to be your last appearance, so get it together. Maybe instead of like lying... And, you know, using these conspiracy theories to misinform people, why don't you actually just, I don't know, not lie? Try telling the truth. Stop being a hack and believing every single fucking thing that Donald Trump and Republican Party media says. Stop watching OAN. Stop watching Newsmax. Like, be objective. It's, it's not that hard. Stop being stupid. So this was um, really, really a bad look, but I'm glad that folks are seeing who Madison Cawthorn is. You know, it doesn't matter how old you are. A Republican is a Republican at the end of the day. They have no new ideas. They just care about delivering for their corporate donors and suppressing votes. And really, it's all about self-aggrandizement. Like, he didn't run for Congress because he cares about people. He ran for Congress because he wants to be in a position of power. Like, if, he, if I'm wrong about that, he can prove me wrong. Put up some policies, sponsor some legislation now that would actually help the American people. But he's not going to do that because this dude is a fraud.